Hey everyone, welcome back to Biological Imaging. After we finish the flower assignment, we're going to move on to marine invertebrates. And at each station, we have a small finger bowl, and I've cut out a piece of black cloth to serve as a background so that you'll have a dark background behind the specimen. So you have to wet this with fresh water under the sink, and you have to wring it out a few times so that you won't have bubbles that will form if you just pour seawater. This is seawater from the ocean. So you have to get this wet and, and uh, get all the air bubbles out of it. And then you can set it in the bottom of the finger bowl like this, and then fill the bowl up with seawater. So I have a few of these one gallon containers. Seawater is written on the side and SW on the top. And I just collected this from the ocean up on Cape Cod. And so you want to fill this pretty high. Uh, you want to be careful because, of course, we have computers and camera gear. And all of that stuff doesn't work so well um, with salt water on it. But you also want the seawater to be over the top of the specimen because the water acts as a mirror. So if the specimen's sticking out, you'll get this really bright spot that doesn't look that great in the image. Over here we have our Providence College touch tank, and uh, Dr. E built this for us. And we have some critters in the touch tank that Dr. E collected. I'm going to collect some myself this coming week, but for instance, this is a, a sand dollar, a live sand dollar. Usually you find these on the beach and they're white because they're they're dead, but this is what they look like when they're alive, and these are quite beautiful underneath the stereo microscope. This is a sponge called Microsiona, and you can tear a piece of the sponge off to photograph it in the bowl. We have brittle stars. These are Ophioderma. Yikes, and he doesn't like being out of the water, but he can't hurt you. I'm going to put him back. This is a cold water coral called Astrangia. These are really beautiful in the scope. I'll show you this um, in a few minutes. And this is a green sea urchin called Strongylos entrotus drabachiensis. Say that three times fast. So we're going to have more animals. More are going to come in. I'm going to collect some myself. And Dr. E is going to collect a few more for us. So we'll have a lot of cool animals. So you just have to take your critter and stick them in the bowl of water. It still has some air bubbles, a piece of cloth, so it's floating. Um, and then you can look at this underneath the stereo microscope. Let's give it a try. Okay, we're at the stereo light microscope, and as usual, I've put a pair of gloves on, I've cleaned off the eyepieces with Windex, I've turned on the camera, put my SD card in the slot, I've turned on the light source for the microscope, I've turned on the computer, I've loaded EOS Utility, and now the camera is talking to the computer, and we're ready to go. I have the live view window already open, and I made a new folder called Joe's Marine Invertebrates, which is on the desktop. So my hope is that we won't totally flood the equipment with salt water. I mean, salt water is gonna, gonna get on the table and on the base of the microscope. So we can just do our best, can only do our best, and this is a strangia. This is the coral, the cold water coral that's found off of Rhode Island in Massachusetts, and it's quite striking. I'm going to dial my microscope to the lowest magnification. That's always the easiest thing to do. It's easier to find your sample that way. I'm going to adjust the light source a little bit, and here you can see 
my sample out of focus. So I'm going to see if I can bring it in focus. And then move my sample around to see what I can find. So normally the coral come out and the polyps open up kind of like a flower opening up. Um, now they're kind of tucked away a little bit, probably because I picked them up out of the water. But let's try to focus on this one here. there I'd say about about there and then we can take our shot and there we go there's our final image um, it helps again to play with the light a little bit so you can make it more dramatic by raking the light across the sample Try again. And then we can go up in mag by turning this dial here. Let's see where I am. There, how about this one here? Okay, there you go. Whoops. <laughs> um, after you take the shot, of course, please put the critter back into the touch tank. And you can pour this seawater into the tank as well. And just rinse the bowl and the cloth off with fresh water. And then just leave it you know, on the table to air dry. That will be fine. And then you can use it again next time. And as usual, turn off all the equipment. Okay, you guys, that's it for today. See you next time. Have a good weekend.